Okay, so I was looking at the Facebook the other day and I saw this video. Can you pick it up on your phone, please? Yeah. Now what you're looking at is something called a steam devil, which I had never heard of. So I did some research and I'm going to introduce it to you today on Steam Culture. Now steam devils were formally recognized in 1971 by Walter Lyons and Stephen Peace from the University of Wisconsin after they observed them on Lake Michigan. Now, steam devils, if you live on a, uh, on a large body of water like the Great Lakes, or if you live near a volcano, I'll explain that later, or even Yellowstone National Park, uh, steam devil might not be that foreign to you. You might see them all the time. I've not seen them, and I think they're really interesting. So you need a couple of things to make a steam devil. You need a warm body of water, you need some cold air, and you need a pretty good breeze blowing across. Now by warm, I'm talking about the differential between the air and the water so it seems warm. And for instance, you could have 35 degree water, which is not warm by my definition, but you could have uh, air that's, you know, minus five. So that would make the air, uh, the water seem warm relative to the air. Does that make sense? Sorry for all the rambling there. But here's my point. So you got this uh, warm uh, body of water and uh, because of the cold air above, some of the water evaporates and it forms a, a layer of warm, moist air, uh, its own little atmosphere right above the water's level. Now that's what we commonly know as fog, or as people call it, steam fog. So you see the fog you know, on top of the body of water. So here's what happened though. You have the cold air above it, you have uh, cold, dry air, warm, moist air, and it creates an instability, which is the premise for convection. So what happens is, the air uh, starts to convect, and it starts to convect into the atmosphere rapidly. Now, for some reason, when that, um, that rapid convection starts, there's so much energy that a vortice forms, so it starts to spin. But it spins horizontally to start, for some reason, they don't know why. So it starts on its side, but because of the breeze, it sort of moves in the direction of the air, and these things start to magically tilt upwards, which is where you get these steam devils, which are pretty fascinating. I enjoyed looking at all the videos uh, out there and pictures. Very peaceful. Kind of made me want to fall asleep because when people post videos, they seem to post that kind of fluty spa music. So if you want to fall asleep, go see a video of a steam devil. But I digress. So where are you going to find a steam devil? Uh, large bodies of water, uh, lakes, uh, large ponds, the Great Lakes, uh, Yellowstone, oh, and volcanoes. So apparently when the volcano erupts and the lava goes into the water, even though that water might be 75, 80 degrees, it's not when the lava hits. It raises the water temperature so that the differential between the air and the water is so great now that a steam devil forms. So you see these video here of uh, steam devils right around a volcano. This particular video was taken in Hawaii. So I hope you enjoyed that. You now know what to look for. So in the fall, when the water temperature is still warm and the cold air comes in rapidly, look for steam devils. In the meantime, look for us on the social media, on the Facebook, on the YouTube, on the internet, because we have social content for you. I will see you next week on Steam Culture.